Well, happy Father's Day. You're not going to hear a sermon. You're going to hear a conversation today. So uh, we got, I guess we're uh, five of the Peru team, huh? So uh, anyway, guys, I really appreciate you uh, coming and joining. And uh, here we are. This is the PowerPoint. We'll see how far we get. So spread it out here. Scotty, you get these last page down there. Okay, very good. Here we go. So what we wanted to do today is just have a conversation um, with, uh, with some guys. And uh, JJ, you're not a dad, but uh, we know you have something to say here. So we wanted to get a young guy's perspective in here too. So uh, what we were doing is uh, we're five guys and we're going to talk about five guys in the Bible. We really should have had some burgers and fries, but we're going to get those later on. No fries, just burgers. <laughs> and by the way, there's a guy, Brian, uh, who's uh, just an amazing servant, and he's out there with Pastor George on the grill. Make sure high-five them, say thanks, Brian, when you head out today, because there's burgers and hot dogs, and food has been multiplying out there. There's some bacon, there's some, anyway, good stuff. So um, from Slim Jims to Snickers, anyway, it's going to be an awesome Father's Day here. Um, guys, I want to just talk a little bit. What I've asked you to do is each of you grabbed a Bible character, and so we're going to talk about that. And, uh, but uh, we're going to talk about the fight that they had, the crossroad in their life, and also the impact. Let me ask this first question, and you guys better talk and open up, and uh, let's just speak up over one another. It's okay. So, but uh, what do you think? Some of the, what are some of the fights that guys are going through in this generation? Anybody want to start it off? So Sorry, we're <laughs> let's go. A bunch of guys up here. Uh, yeah. Um, I think one of the one of the things that men are challenged with today is is, is not compromising, is staying rooted in, in in the Word of God, and not you know you you get out in the world and you just get immersed in this sinful, wicked world, and it's so easy to compromise. And you know, it, it's it's a challenge, but you, know, you really need to stand your ground, you, and you need to be rooted in the Word of God. Um, and I would encourage you too um, to be surrounded by other strong men of God to to uplift you when you're when you're beat down when you're challenged. You know you have other brothers in in Christ to you know, to to pray with you to encourage you yeah. and to strengthen you. Yeah, Scotty, you you have a huge amount of responsibility uh, at work. How do you uh, it it beats you down a lot of times, right? Because it's it's a load on your shoulders. How do you stay resilient? Yeah, I think a lot of guys we have a set of skills and we're using them out there, and uh, sometimes it's hard to find purpose in that though. You know, that how, how am I doing this for God? How am I no, reading the word and knowing the word and then really translating that into what I'm doing day to day? And that can be a struggle, I think, for a lot of guys, especially me. Um, but, you know, really God will speak to me and just say, hey, it's we got to get back to the people. You know, God has given me a job where I have some freedom to, to roam a job site with 100 some guys and talk to them and get to know them and, right. and really uh, make it personal. Yeah. Jeremy, you just graduated from high school. Let's hear it for Jeremy. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. With the fight, what's the importance of decision making and kind of this issue of crossroads? Because there's places that we don't always see as huge, but every single day there's just like a fork in the road and what are we going to do? Um, I, think, I think just being able to kind of, uh, you know, step back and, and, you know, talk to God and have a, have a little bit of an internal dialogue with him and uh, understand that he has sort of, well, he, he has a plan for you and that, that you can trust that. And, and even though not knowing, you know, what necessarily might be the right or wrong uh, yeah. decision, uh, that you, you can, you know, have faith that he will. Uh, yeah, I'm reading through Proverbs right now, just about to finish up, but uh, it talks a lot about young men listen to what I have to say. And it's speaking of wisdom, but it talks about to your father and your mother as well. Your dad's spoken a lot of things into your life as far as what's the, what's the wise choices. What kind of value is that to you? Um, my dad is, he's an amazing guy. He, uh, I, I can't imagine the, the stress that he has. Uh, yeah, because he's got work, and then how many boys is he raising? Raising seven boys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all younger than me. So ah! he's, yeah. he's still got a lot on his plate. Um, yeah, he does, doesn't he? But, but the, the, the values that he has and the, the way that he's rooted in faith and that he always, uh, he always kind of kind of bring brings back you know any issues that we have any any struggles that we have personally or as a family is is brought back to you know how how can we how can we deal with this in a spiritual way how does right. God have have 
you know, his hand in this situation mm -hmm. and what is his plan for that? Yeah, those are hard conversations yeah. to, to, to head through. Dave, you want to talk about just the issue of impact, what message? Um, I, think we, I think we downplay the kind of uh, ripples of our, of our life. Um, you, know, you want to just talk about impact of how you live, but how as men we live and how that impacts our world? I think that, that for sure that um, we all have a divine purpose for our life. Yeah. And so the thing that we have to, to realize as far as our impact is that every interaction that we have, yeah. I think, is God-breathed. I, th I think that there's a purpose that there are people in our life, whether they're there for a moment or whether they're there for a lifetime. And uh, within all of those uh, interactions, you're going to leave a mark on that person. And so not just what are you doing, but who are you? Yeah, that's big. What is your core? What, are your, what is your character? Because people might remember a couple of things that, that you do well, but they'll definitely remember forever who you are. Yeah, that is the truth. I, I think there's a temptation to think that we can, we can have a big day and make it mo memorable on the big day. So we're the Christmas dad or we're the amusement park dad that it's like have a great time or have the big gift. And that's going to make up for all of the, the, the stuff that's taking place on a daily basis. But it's a lot more of who we are on moment by moment uh, basis that, that has huge impact. So we're going to talk about some Bible characters. Eric, you're going first. And uh, uh, we're going to, anyway, go ahead and talk about this guy named Lot. So um, before I dive into Lot, one of, uh, one of the things I just wanted to, and why I chose Lot, um, in a lot of the Army courses I took, you know, we study great leaders, but we also study individuals that have had challenges, and the reason we study them is how can we learn from them? Um, so Lot in particular is an example of somebody that had an opportunity, made a decision, made a very bad decision that had a lasting impact right. on not only him, his family, and generations to come. Um, so I'll start with Lot, his fight. Uh, the area where uh, Abram and Lot had their, flock, or had their flock and herds uh, could not support them. So they started grumbling amongst themselves. Their, their shepherds and herdsmen were arguing, and uh, Abram, uh, later to become known as Abraham, um, got together with Lot, and Lot is the nephew of Abram, just to give you some background information. So <clears throat> they got together, and Abram said, listen, Lot, we, we can't quarrel amongst ourselves. We can't have these individuals seeing us fight, so we're going to separate. If you want to go left, I'll go right. If you go right, I'll go left. He allowed him the opportunity to make the decision. Uh, so the crossroad that Lot had was he was given the opportunity to decide where to go. Yeah. Uh, Lot looked out over the land. He saw, he saw how green the grass was. He saw the rivers flowing, um, and this is prior to God destroying Sodom how great it was. So he made the selfish, de selfish decision, I'm going to go that way. I'm going to go to the prairies. Um, so Abram said to Lot, uh, it is not the whole land before you. Uh, let's bar company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Um, so he made that decision. Abram lived in the land of Canaan while Lot lived among the cities of the plains and pitched his tent near Sodom. Uh, and you'll see, it. so he, he got close to Sodom, not in the city yet. He was very close to Sodom, as we see in Genesis 13. Um, and Lot knew that the people of Sodom were wicked and were sinful and were sinning greatly against God. So he knowingly made that decision. I'm going to kind of just, I'm going to put my tent near the city. I'm not going to go into the city, but I'll be Man, close no. enough that uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, by, by the way, he's one of these classic guys when, when the Bible talks about there's a way that seems right. Yeah. This seems good, but in the end it leads to. And uh, Abraham was known as a guy that built altars a lot and prayed and sought the Lord. And, and Lot just looked and what seemed good at the moment, he went after it. And there's also really some interesting things on progression. Because it like, he pitched his tent near Sodom and then he's at the gates of Sodom and then he's in Sodom. Yes. And it's like, yes. you just get sucked in and yes. sucked in and sucked in. Yeah. Anybody else? Just anytime you want to add in something, just we don't have to pass the mic, but go ahead and take it, Eric. Uh, so the impact, um, <clears throat> so Lot started out, uh, as Pastor I mentioned, he's outside the city. Yeah. Then he eventually gets into the city. He starts doing business transactions, and the leaders say, hey, you could be a lot more, uh, you know, you could grow your business if you were to come inside the city. So Lot said, great. Uh, he was very short-sighted uh, yeah. in moving to the city, and he completely compromised his family. Uh, that was one of the key takeaways. He was willing to compromise his family for, for business. Uh, so he, he brought his family into the city, um, and he was, he was really influenced by that environment, not only him, but his family. 
Um, he was distressed, yet he didn't leave Sodom. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I wanted to note, too, is you'll see in uh, Genesis 14. So Abram, so there's, there's a battle that takes place uh, amongst the kings. Um, and, and a, or Lot is taken captive. Abram goes out with his men. He rescues Lot, brings Lot back, and then Lot goes back to Sodom a second time and further compromises his, um, his family. So what, what I want to read here is <clears throat> out of Second Peter 2. Um, and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawless, for that righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in his righteousness soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard, yet he remained in that city. Um, and a couple of things I just want to just want to add here, real quickly. Uh, we were told to keep it brief, so I don't want to dive into a three-point sermon or a mini series. But a couple of things. <laughs> Come back next week. I'll do that. Yeah, I'll be, I'll <laughs> no, be back Pastor in, Alex we'll will be back do in that, two yeah. weeks. Um, just a couple key challenges, and this is something I prayed about. You know, how how can God use me? How can God speak through me? It's Father's Day, and a couple of things I want to challenge men and fathers, uh, and I'll hit these briefly. Do not let riches separate you from your family. Yeah. Do not allow wicked people to influence you. Yeah. Do not expose yourself to wickedness and sinfulness. Value the rescue that God has done for us. Beware of progression and sin in your life. Do not be attracted to the things of this world. Become an Abraham to the lots in your life. Lot did really well when he was close to Abraham. As soon as he separated, he started to fall. By the way, if Abraham didn't intercede for him, I don't think he would have no. ever gotten out of Sodom. He would, have, he would have been toast. He would have gone up. It was Abraham that prayed and interceded, and God, for the sake of Abraham's faith, got Lot out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and one thing, we're, we're big here at LCF is legacy. What type of legacy do you want to leave for your children? And it is easier to lead your children into temptation than to lead them out. That's true. And I want to close with this quote from Charles Spurgeon. If you're going to be saved, be saved 100%. Man, that's good stuff. <laughs> Woo! That was awesome. Okay, Dave. By the way, it's kind of it's kind of interesting of the of the individuals that we chose. Uh, I thought all of them would be the, like the giants of the faith. Dave, you you anyway. Benaya is like that, where he's like this amazing. But a lot of us headed to the stories of, of tragic figures, and sometimes we learn a lot from that. We'll talk about that more. But uh, Dave, go after Benaya, would you? Absolutely. So when, when Pastor Bob said, I, I need you to pick someone out of the Bible, my first thought was uh, Benaiah. I knew you would do that. Thank you. <laughs> um, I just love this guy. This guy was fearless. Yeah, he was. Um, if anybody had, uh, has read Mark Batterson's book, uh, In a Pit with a Lion on a Snowy Day, um, Mark Batterson talks about lion chasers. And yeah. he goes into the story of Benaiah, who's yeah. in Samuel, Kings, Chronicles. But, yeah. Um, so this man... Um, jumped, was a fierce warrior, and had huge confidence in his abilities, mm -hmm. jumped into a pit with a lion and slayed it. On a snowy day. On a snowy day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but, you know, if, if a, a lion's chasing me, I don't know if I'm going to turn around, stare at it, <laughs> run yeah. after it, yeah. jump into a pit, and then kill it with my bare hands. Um, I mean, that's awesome. Um, actually, it's kind of inspiring for me. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> I, I have this thing where I love I love risk, I love boldness. Yeah. Um, and so, what I, I take you're, away you're from blessed. This, you have Kathy as your wife. She yeah. kind of holds you in check a little bit. <laughs> amen. Amen. Thank God for my wife, one of the smartest decisions I ever made. Yeah. Amen. Um, so, so what you know? What is the dilemma he faced? I think it, it, it's confidence. Do you have confidence in your God-given abilities? God has implanted within us certain abilities that are, are unique for our purpose. And so you need to have confidence to go out into this world that is so different than what we experience here in this church. Because what we, we learn in here, we live out there. Yeah. And so you have to have confidence to go out and make a difference in this world. I think some of the tough decisions that, that Benaiah had made... Um, do I act despite my fears? Or do I act if I'm the only one that believes this way? Yeah. Every one of us faces fear. 
And there's certainly times, especially with the world that it is today, am I the only one that thinks this way? Yeah. And it, sometimes that can be a very, very lonely place. Um, I want you to know that you can face your fears. With God, you can do anything. You can overcome right. anything over any adversity. And because of all of that, you know, what kind of legacy did Benaya leave? I think that because he has a divine purpose, who we are and what we do matters. Yeah. I would say that everyone leaves a legacy. Be intentional with yours. Boy, that is true. And by the way, Benaya also is a great story because um, it does mention his father and his grandfather. And so there's a, this real sense of legacy there. Um, it, it speaks of them as, he comes from actually a priestly line, a, a Le, the a tribe of Levi. And, uh, and, and you'll find the strength that even comes, the grandfather, the father, and then along comes uh, Benaiah as one of uh, David's uh, mighty men. So um, that's awesome. Any, any, any of you guys have anything to add on or a question about Benaiah that you want to throw out to Dave? Intentional conversation. Okay. So anyway, we're going to. Um, uh, I do have something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I think one of the things just to, that Dave said is being intentional with your time with your children. Yeah. Um, you know, not just fun activities, but praying with them, reading yeah. the Bible with them. Um, th there's a lot of statistics out there that children are more likely to be in church if their father's in church. That's true. I mean, and that, that, that challenge, that's a challenge to, to myself as, as well as the other uh, fathers within the church is, is take that time to be intentional with your children, invest in them. And, you know, life's going to, you know, you're, you're going to pass away, but you want to have that strong legacy of your children. Yeah. I think your choices in life are very easy when you know what your priorities are. Um, if you've never done this, I, I highly recommend take some time in prayer and then write out what your priorities are in life, and then share that with your spouse if you're married, or your significant other, and make sure that you live those priorities. It's good. It's really good. Uh, Benaiah also had opportunity. He is involved in the battles for the legacy that comes from David. So he's he's a mighty man in David's life, but also he's the guy that really establishes Solomon as the next king when there's some real time of confusion after David's death. So it's great cool. loyalty. Yeah, I just want to talk with you a couple minutes, and if you guys have any questions, there's this one talent guy that is in the parable. So he's a fictitious character. He's just he's a character in the story of Jesus with the parable, uh, and he's a, he's a one talent guy. Uh, again, it will be like a man going on a journey, who called his servants, entrusted his wealth to them. Uh, to one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, to another one bag. So this is the one bag of gold guy. Uh, and, and by the way, you'll find from King James Version, it speaks of talent, which is a sum of money. Uh, but each according to his bil ability. And then he went on his journey. Uh, but the man who received the one bag, while they put things to work, the one who had received the one bag, the one talent guy dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Okay, so... Uh, I find this is this guy is so different from a guy like Benaiah, okay? So he's like the opposite. But here he is, he's given great opportunity and he's given responsibility. And to me, that is the fight. I think that's the fight for a lot of us as guys. We, we have to just look at, and what's the opportunity that God puts before us? Or what is the responsibility that he places upon our shoulders? And I think a lot of us just really chafe sometimes under the responsibility, but the responsibility that gives us is an opportunity for us to serve, and it really becomes opportunity for our greatness. Uh, but he really is a lazy guy, and he lets laziness take the place. Do I bear the responsibility with faithfulness and hard work, or do I take the easy road? And I think that most of us as guys, there's something inside of us that there's this lazy gene that, especially in the issue of relationships, that's really strong, um, where it's just like we can be selfish maybe emotionally, or it's like I invest a lot in, in work environment, things like that, and then I come home and um, it, it, just to veg out. So like, you know, turn, turn on sports or, or something like that, and let me hit the man cave and let me withdraw. And I really feel like, like that's what the one talent guy did. And, uh, and as a re result, he absolutely squandered uh, what uh, the opportunity that he had in front of him. 
I think it's Spurgeon that talks about this, and he says the most of us are one-talent guys. And so we think that that's our excuse out from really carrying responsibility and seizing opportunity because it's like, well, I don't have, you know, the big time giftings of certain other individuals. Um, but Spurgeon says, if the kingdom of God, every one talent guy just comes and understands, hey, I haven't been given huge abilities, but I've been given these abilities and to use it like, you know, for the honor and glory of God. And if we would do that, it's amazing how the kingdom of God would advance through us. And uh, master, he said, and this is when the guy comes back, his master, I knew that you're a hard man harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seeds. So I was afraid, and I went out and hid your gold in the ground. So here is what belongs to you. And by the way, it's really interesting. He shirks responsibility, and he puts it back on his master like, hey, this isn't my issue. It's not that I'm lazy or anything like that, but, you know, I know what you're like. And, and, and he just he completely puts it on him. Oh, let me go back to this. Uh, his master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown, gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers uh, so that when I return, at least receive back some interest. And uh, to me, here's the impact. Uh, Beware the easy road, the lazy life, the path of least resistance. It is a tragic destination. And notice Jesus' words here. And what he's saying is, uh, the call that I give to you, the call to follow me, what are you going to do with that? And for whoever has been given more, um, whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance, and whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them, and that's what happened. And throw that worthless servant outside into darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You guys have any comments on this one, or are we done? Okay, JJ. <laughs> it's all yours, man. Um, all right, so I, I chose Job. Um, it's, it's one of those stories that I feel like is talked about a lot. Um, okay. I know we've, we've discussed it in, in youth group and stuff, and I, I, I find it really, uh, really interesting to look at, at Job's response to the struggles that he goes through. Um, if, if you are not aware of the story of Job, um, there's, a, there's a conversation between, between God and, and the devil and uh, you know, God allows God allows Satan to to have total reign over Job's life, and as long as he doesn't, you know, murder him or whatever, I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so so Job, uh, in in the span of one day, receives uh, four four uh, four letters that that uh, tell him that he's lost pretty much everything, everything in his life. It's gone. His his money, his wealth, his his children, his family, except for his wife. Except for his wife, <laughs> which which unfortunately take does her, not help please. him too much. Take her. <laughs> well, she's the one who says yeah, curse God and exactly. die. Exactly. Yeah, I don't she's know. She's like the devil in his <laughs> ear. My word. Um. So so Job Job struggles with this with this uh, this idea of not understanding why why he has these things happening. Don't um, marry a woman like that. <laughs> Thank Resist you. Resist it. Listen Thanks. to your dad. Listen to your mom. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, so, so he's, he's, uh, he's mentally, you know, going back and forth with God, and, and spiritually he's, he doesn't understand why these things are happening, yeah. or, uh, you know, he, he, I believe he, he asks God why he was born, um, yeah. why, why he would, he would let, Job lived this life if he knew this was the outcome of what he was going right. to right. get to. Um, and this, this whole story is, you know, tragic, but it's, it's really inspiring as, uh, to see how Job, even though losing everything and, and having friends and family tell him, just give up. Like, yeah. There's nothing left. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, the friends accuse him of, this is your personal sin. Your, this, your, is, this is all your, yeah. your fault. Um, he, he still, you know, even though having doubts, he, he stays rooted in his faith and, yeah. and doesn't, uh, turn to the ways of the world and doesn't choose the, yeah. the easy life, the easy road, yeah. um, that you were talking about. So, 
you want to read those verses, Jeremy? These are, yeah. these are really powerful. Uh, at this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. That's really awesome. So I, I think it's just it's something that we can, as, as men, learn to learn to live like, learn to, you know, even though, even though things are uncertain and we're not sure why certain things are happening or, or you know, where we're going to end up, that God has a plan, that, that he has his hand over our lives. So I'm so glad you chose this guy. This, this whole issue of that prime example of worship, when he is saying, blessed be the name of the Lord, it's, that's, in the be- that's in the beginning, when everything's falling apart in the first mm-hmm. chapter. He is responding with that before before the whole story and the end, and it gets it gets worse. It starts hitting him physically, mm-hmm. and his health fails. And he's got these three friends that are trying to move him to it's your fault, so you have to move into repentance. For you got to figure out what you've done wrong because the God is God is against you, and uh, ultimately God does restore him. But yeah, yeah. So it's good stuff. Hey, Scotty, who's who's the guy that you're going after? Yeah, so I started uh, reading on Samson in the book of Judges, uh, chapters 13 through 16, and yeah. uh, I just figured, uh, I think for, for what, on the surface, what a lot of us know or see is, you know, big, bulky, handsome guy that all the ladies are after, and, uh, you know, we, we blame Delilah for taking him down, yeah. you know? I've, I've wondered if he's a big, bulky guy, or because it's right. the Spirit of the it's, Lord that came upon him, that's so... Right. He might be the 98th. It's more like a brave heart, really. <laughs> I don't you know? think that's, yeah, like, I have no idea. W- William Wallace kind of guy that yeah, you know, I have stories no are told, you know. Yeah. Um, I, th- I think it's interesting with, with Samson that even before he was conceived, uh, God had a plan for his life. Boy, that is true. Um, it, uh, the angel of the Lord came to his parents, told his mom, you know, refrain from drinking, refrain from your, this, this son of yours is going to be a Nazarite. Nazarite vow. Pretty yeah. strict um, way of living. Uh, so I find it interesting that, that God knew that he was going to, you know, deliver Samson into, you know, a group of pe- people, the Israelites, to deliver them from the, from the uh, um, Philistines. Yeah. You know, so God's calling was on his life before he even knew yeah. um, with his parents. And his parents were obedient um, to that call. Um, his dad questioned it, you know, to make sure that it was there. But it's interesting how the mom and dad both came together to make sure that this was uh, from the Lord and, and they knew the scriptures, and they knew that this was. Uh, so really the, the fight and the dilemma as Samson goes on and, and uh, starts realizing his calling, I think the, the, the dilemma and the fight is that he knows the calling, but to live out the calling despite the distractions and the personal pleasure and the sin, the sin that he right. draws him, and, and he starts, starts leaning and making decisions towards, obviously, the sin over the calling of God in his life. Yeah, and uh, the scriptures that are up there, you know, it, it talks about in, in Judges 13 that, you know, his mother gave birth to a boy and named him Samson. He grew and the Lord blessed him. And yeah. the spirit of the Lord began to stir him. I love that. Yeah. That the spirit of the Lord began to stir him uh, while he was in uh, Mahana Dan between Zorah and Estelle. So the, here's, here's God delivering a way for his people to be freed from the, uh, from the Philistines. And uh, well, we'll get we'll get on to that, but but God's calling on his life, I think, was hands yeah. down. It was laid out, um, but obviously, he decides to, uh, in that dilemma, decides to give up, you know, his secret, which is where his strength comes from. And God, you know, calls to him and says, you know, any any razor hits your hits your head, you will lose your strength. And I think this is this is kind of the sad part of this story is he decides willingly. And he knows where his strength comes from. And he is walking away from God at this point by giving up this secret to a woman. Um, yeah, and by the way, he, he flirted was, with this for quite a while. Yeah, this isn't you the know, first cause, time. Because yeah. what, the first time he says, you know, what is it if you tie my hands with ropes? Or, so, yeah, he loved, so he's flirting he loved around riddles, with that. He loved jokes. He, he seemed to be just kind of playing along with this whole thing and didn't never took the calling of God seriously in his life. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it's, uh, it's, it's tragic, really, but... You know, you read this through the thing, through these stories of, you know, Delilah says, oh, what's it going to take? What's your secret? And mm-hmm. he, he was just kind of playing, playing around with it. Oh, it's ropes. It's fresh bowstring. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's just kind of laughing as he just breaks them all loose. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but 
you, you do read it and go, this guy's an idiot. Didn't he see like what, what she was trying to do, you know? But, uh, but I, I think it's interesting that, you know, when you're, you're not living in God's calling for your life, you know, what, you know, the, the distractions and these, these ungodly relationships that we get ourselves into, we're really stuck in them. We, we're blinded by what's really going on. Yeah. Um, so I think that's what was happening here with him. But when he decided to tell her, you know, after she's nagging and prodding at him, and I think he finally gives it up, I, I think he knew what he was doing. And it really is a sad moment because he, the, the spirit of God leaves him. Like the, that yeah. power leaves him. So the, when he kills, a, he kills like 3,000 men with a, with a, a jawbone of a donkey, you yeah. know, like that's man stuff right there yeah. to me. Yeah. But, but, but at the same time, I think, I think we can mistakenly think that it was Samson and it wasn't. It yeah. was the spirit of God that came on him, like Pastor Bob was yeah. saying. Uh, those moments, he could have been, he could have been the size of, you know, you know, four foot tall. We don't, we don't really know, but it was the spirit of God that gave him the power to do those things. And at that moment, when he decided to tell her that that secret, where his power came from, it left him. Yeah. So, um, and then I think. Yeah, but by the way, Scott, he he has such a contrast to what we've studied in First Peter, mm -hmm. where it repeatedly says, you know, uh, wake up. Uh, be sober, be alert. Yes. And you get the feeling that, you know, and I don't remember now from the text, does it talk about him with like, ha it's like he's had enough wine, he's hanging out, because he does fall asleep in the middle of all this and it happens. And you almost yeah. wonder, you can almost see this little bit of a d drunken stupor yeah. a little bit, and she, she gets it I, out of I it. don't know the whole deal with him eating the honey out of the carcass. I didn't read into that too much. But I know it, God's calling on his life was to be a Nazarite, which is yes. a strict way of living. And he, but way before this, started veering from that. He really did. So um, so he really, yeah. he was just, yeah, he was living, he was living it up. And yeah, he was hit, really not taking yeah, it seriously. Let's hit the impact, because I want to take time and pray over these guys before yeah. we, yeah. So really the impact for me is that, you know, he could have been so much more, but God still used him to complete his plan. Right. These are some of my favorite verses when, you know, he's, he's in prison. The Philistines are basically mocking him and thanking yeah. their God that yeah. their God has delivered uh, Samson into their hands. Yes. And this is, a, this is a, for me, the moment where he turns his heart back to God. And for the first time, really, even, well, in Scripture, that he prays. And he says, God. Wow. And he acknowledges God here. And he says, God, just give me the strength just this one more time. And for me, I love him. By, by the way, he's blind. They put out his he's eyes. He's blind. They've plucked out his eyes. He's got a, a servant helping him. And he asks the servant, can you just lean me on those two pillars that hold up the temple? And for me, I, I love this. I love the redemption story. I think this is, this yes. is Samson's moment. Uh, and, and the awesome thing about this is God had a promise in, on his life, had a calling on his life. And God never backed down on that promise. He still delivers the Philistines into the into the Israelites hands despite him living a life of sin and deciding to to go off of it so yeah I think uh in the moment where he asked God to give him strength just one more time read the prayer would you Scott yeah yeah then Samson prayed to the Lord sovereign Lord remember me please God strengthen me just one more time and let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes then Samson reached towards the two central pillars oh well, that was too fast Bracing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. He leaned on the pillars and That's he it. down. Yeah. Bracing himself against them, his, height, uh, his right hand on the one and his left hand on the other, Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. Yeah. And then he pushed with all his might, and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. Thus, he killed many more when he died than when he, while he lived. That's, what, what an amazing yeah. end. And it's, he, he's under the rubble. Yeah. But, man, he is, he is at peace with God in this moment. Amen. More, more so than probably any other time in his life. Hey, I'd love for every single guy in the room to go ahead and stand. Some of you are young bucks. You're not dads. But why don't, guys, you just uh, stand on up with us. Um, and uh, we're going to stand, too, guys. And I really appreciate it. Let's hear it for these guys. You've given us some amazing material. One of the things that the Bible talks about is these have been given to you as warnings. And by the way, real strong wisdom means you don't have to learn all from personal experience. You can learn from, from what you've watched with others. So there, there, are things that we've, there are things that you may have learned from your father that are positive things, but some of you have learned some things 
that were negative things where you've said, I don't have to live like that. And that's wisdom when, when you do that. You don't, have to go through, you don't have to go through everything that some of these guys and the, the mistakes that they're making, you don't have to, you don't have to do that. But uh, uh, there's this guy in Schindler's List, and it's Oscar Schindler, and uh, this is a shot of him, and it's the very close of the movie, and he's looked at his car, and he's looking at, I think it was a lapel pin that he took off, but what he was realizing was uh, what he had that there could have been Jewish lives that would have been saved. And he's looking at this simple pin, and maybe there's one or two more Jews that could have been saved if he would have been more proactive. My prayer for every single one of us in the room is that God will give us the opportunities that he gives us, that he'll help us to seize them so that when we come to the end of life, our regrets are minimalized. We'll all have regrets because we're all flawed. We've all made mistakes. We regret every single one of them. But uh, may, our, may our regrets be small. And uh, because God has purpose, and, and let's just ask that he uses us. So guys, pray with me, would you? Lord, we call unto you, and here it's a Father's Day, and we remember what um, uh, you've done for us and just creating us men. And uh, we're, we're not ashamed of that. And I pray, Father, that the kind of strength, Lord, that you uh, want to put inside of us, Lord, like men of great faith, but also, God, that you will help us to resist the pull of an easy road and the troubled road just because of momentary decisions. So we make ourselves available to you, and we ask, oh God, that your power would rest upon us, oh Lord. Some of the guys in the room today, God, we just need a second chance. We need one more time, oh God, that you'd be merciful to us. And some of us are going through decisions that we're making, and we know that it's just, it leads down to stupid and a dumb road and a bad end. But Father, we, just wanna, we want you to just reach down in mercy and grace and pick us up, God, and put us on that straight path, the narrow path, Lord, the path that leads to lots of life. And it'll be life for us. It'll be life for our families. It'll be life, God, for the future and our legacy. And so we make ourselves available to you. Oh, Jesus, we are thankful that you lead the way and you forgive and you're powerful and you come to indwell in us by the Holy Spirit. And so we say to you, fill us up, oh God, with who you are and all of the goodness and all of the boldness that you intended, God, for us to live in when you designed us and created us. Good plans, prosper us, bless us, oh God. And we call out unto you and we just believe you for it in the name of Jesus. And every guy said, amen. 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 Hey, we want to say happy Father's Day to you guys. Thanks so much for a great panel a conversation for what you invested in getting ready. And uh, make sure and catch some stuff on your way out. Have an awesome, awesome Father's Day. God bless. They say this 